like augmented reality, driverless cars, and artificial intelligence. We've been hearing and talking about game-changing technologies that will transform the way we see the world and how we interact with one another. But just how close are we to living in a world like the ones we see on those sci-fi movies and TV shows? Futurist Nick Badminton says we are closer than ever, saying 2017 will be the start of a golden era for consumer tech that will fundamentally change society. That's a big promise. Nick joins me in studio this morning. Good, Good to morning. see you. Good morning. I've got to start with Futurist. This is a thing. This yeah. is a profession. This is your profession. What is it? Yeah, so um, I got hugely curious about the world of technology, and since the age of 10, I've been on computers, but really worrying about how, how technology, when, as it enters society, how it changes the dynamics of how how we interact and how our media works and how government works and how society really bonds itself but also uh, pushes itself forward. So how do you make your predictions every year? So I spend uh, many hours every day reading and chatting to people, producing podcasts, doing conferences, speaking at places, um, and just really getting information about what's happening in the world. Everything from academia and research and development all the way through to consumer technology. And then I look at society and cultural changes, mm -hmm. and I mash them together and I think, okay, where are we gonna be in three, five, 10, 20 years? And I really lay down the predictions. I, I, I put money down on some of them as well. Do you put money down on some of them? Yeah, just Should we friends. be putting money down? No, not really. <laughs> no, not really. No. Okay, so let's talk about the fact that you say consumers are going to be really embracing tech this year. Yeah, so um, the last few years have been incredible. It's 10 years since the iPhone first came out, and now like two and a half billion people in the world use smartphones and, and touchscreen smartphones. So um, technology's kind of been on a test run. We've just been working it out. Technology this year is a tipping point. Artificial intelligence, mixed reality. What do you mean by art like artificial intelligence specifically? This so, year? so we're, we're talking about computers that learn um, through experience. So we feed them data, they've got cameras, they can take in visual imagery and really work out how the world works for themselves. And then we integrate that into multiple platforms. It could be anything from like self-driving cars to like chat apps that help us book holidays to, to whatever. Okay, and so it, the self-driving cars things, we've been, I feel like we've been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. They're testing them. We've seen them testing in rural areas in Boston, I believe, as well. Yeah. Testing. Is this going to be a real thing this year? Yeah, absolutely. So there's been self-driving uh, taxis through Uber in Philadelphia and San Francisco at this point. There's open source platforms coming out onto, onto the market. I mean, Tesla upgraded it, all of the cars that their owners um, actually have overnight with autopilot so they can all drive themselves. So it's here, it's already here. And like Google and Ford and all these people are gonna be really pushing this. Mm -hmm. By like 2020, mm -hmm. more and more people are gonna be buying electric cars and a lot of them are gonna be autonomous. Okay, so this kind of stuff, that your prediction, should we be frightened by any of this or should we be inspired by this? It's gonna feel strange. Mm -hmm. And I think when that strangeness occurs, like jumping in a self-driving car is gonna feel a little weird putting on some augmented re um, reality glasses and, and seeing hockey games played on tables in front of us is going to feel oh. really weird. But it's going to feel very normal um, very quickly. And I don't think, I think the fear just comes from like, what's going to happen to me and my situation? Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of jobs that change. There's going to be a lot of personal situations that change. So I think there's just a little, people are uncomfortable. Yeah, well, you know, that reminds me when I got when I got the first Blackberry, my first Blackberry, not many people had a Blackberry. Yeah. I remember looking at this thing, I got it for my birthday, I was like, what, I do not like this, what yeah. is this? And then it became something that I could not live without. Yeah, absolutely. Those new, the new things that you're talking about will we'll be there uh, shortly. Yeah, and, and, and behaviors that they change in us, the little, the little flashing red, red dot in the corner on a Blackberry, called it the Crackberry, right? It's yes. like, we need to pick it up. Totally. That's the kind of behavior that comes from technology. I think it's slightly irresponsible, mm -hmm. but I think we need to be really responsible about how we push technology into society mm -hmm. and build on the, the good ethics of, of what a good society should be. Okay, so this idea of a psychedelic cultural reality yes. that we're entering into, explain. So psychedelic, everything's gonna feel a little strange. When you've got a world that becomes highly visual and highly different in the way that, work, that, that we're working, it just feels like it's a little bit of a trip. Mm. <laughs> a cultural because all of this technology is going to ground itself in our lives and on the streets and in the buildings that we work in. And the reality is that it's going to start accelerating into real life and it's going to become commonplace. So that's why I call it this. It's just going to feel a little strange. And, you know, the next five years, we're going to be on this ride to really have a new normality. So are we going to be losing jobs as a result of this with the, you know, the driverless cars, that sort of yeah. thing? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a shift in the job market, I would suspect. Yeah, so there was a report by the Brookfield Institute over at Ryerson um, that, that looked at all the jobs in Canada and worked out about 42% of jobs in the country are actually at risk of being automated. Mm -hmm. So the top five had things like administrative assistance in it, um, you know, retail um, cashiers, 
Now, people that are doing repetitive work that can be replicated by a machine. But one of the big things I think that was actually quite surprising to me was truck drivers. Because mm -hmm. truck drivers, they jump in the truck and they yeah. drive thousands of kilometers and at the other end they, they drop off their cargo. And um, even companies like Uber and whatever in, uh, investing in this technology to just make trucks drive themselves. Taxis are going to drive themselves. This is where the tipping point is going to be for actually like self-driving technology as well. This is when I start to feel really old because I'm like, I don't want change, I don't want change, but it's happening. Nick, we yeah. appreciate you being here. Thanks Thank so you much so for much. your insight. Thank All right, we'll be back with a look at your national news and weather coming up. Stay tuned.